Hey, I want to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for everything business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, moneymatterstoptips.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have David Hillison on the line, and he's president over at D. Hill Financial. David, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. Happy to be here. So I'm excited to get into today's topic. When I saw it on the show notes, how, how you built a, re- a referral-based business. I mean, a lot of business owners, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of executives listening, and we all know one of, the, one of our favorite things to get out there in any business is a great, nice, warm referral, and you've managed to build a business on it. So I want to get into that. But before we do, um, I want to start out with you giving us a little bit of background on what you're doing over at D. Hill Financial. I own an insurance practice that works in the life and health insurance space, Um, work on my own, and do not have any primary carrier relationships, which means my primary focus is on my customers, and that's proved to be a, uh, a good path for success. That's awesome. And uh, I think that's a great uh, transition. First off, congratulations. I see you're, you're going on your four-year anniversary for, your, for uh, D-Hill Financial, so that's amazing. Congrats on that. Absolutely. Uh, every time I go to make coffee, it's another day. <laughs> I love it. Uh, well, let's get into um, your, your best practices for referrals, how you build a business on it. I mean, let, let, let's just start there. Where do you want to start? Well, I... Uh, recognize that the traditional model for building an insurance practice is uh, cold calling and asking people for meetings and insurance reviews, but I wanted to take a non-traditional path. Part of that is being able to leverage digital a little bit better, but when it comes to uh, building a strong network, uh, the real key is on focusing on the other person. So my mindset was always, how can I help other people? grow and succeed in their business, and if I was helping them to grow and succeed in their business, I felt over time that uh, that would yield the types of results I was looking for, which are more referrals from the types of people that I really want to work with over a long period of time. So let's get um, let's get a little bit deeper on this one because I hear many people say that you know that, that they want to build deep relationships and I get it and a lot of us want to do that but the but the type of people that can truly do it and that can actually build a business from it are, are unique and in my opinion I mean I've been in media now I think you said three years or going on three years or four years something like that I lost track but um, before that I was you know in, in in the financial services industry for almost 14 years and uh, there were very few guys I saw that were really consistently good at getting referrals so I, I got to dig a little bit deeper on your on your secret here David so what what's your like what's the secret sauce give it to us come on <laughs> well a, a, every year when we set out our goals a lot of times we have financial related goals some of them are activity related goals mm. my number one goal in 2018 and 2019 was to refer business to 10 people that I had never referred business to before Wow. So when I am going to networking meetings and that's what I am communicating, the, who wouldn't want to get time with me to see how I might be able to help their business? And what they found was that I truly meant it. So if I'm going to a networking event and I say I, I need, I, I want to be able to refer a commercial insurance partner, uh, that is something that people – could find. Now, when they found that type of person, sometimes the commercial insurance person that they found wasn't a great fit for me, Mm -hmm. but because I'm an independent broker, have more markets, they may say, hey, I have someone that jumps out of airplanes. Do you think you can help them? Or I have someone with a DUI background. uh, Do you think you can help? And all of a sudden, I couldn't necessarily ask for someone that jumps out of airplanes, but because (laughs) I had opportunities for commercial insurance brokers, it was a way to to bring those two pieces together very effectively. I knew it. I knew you had some secrets you were hiding over there for us. I knew there was something else because I'm like, no, the people that really do it, they're very – number one, so you had a goal and it was, and you measured it. So, I mean, that's the number one thing. So you started off the year, you said 10, and, and, you, and, and, you, uh, and you measured it and you kept track and you held yourself accountable. Um, and so you you really took advantage slash um, maximized the whole idea of the law of reciprocation. Like what you give, you're going to get back like many times fold. 
correct. Some of them were direct spheres of influence. So the, the types of people that my clients need most commonly are going to be in professional services. I work with a lot of small to medium-sized businesses, helping them on benefits. They need payroll. They need accounting. They need uh, legal assistance. They actually need digital marketing assistance. So uh, being able to develop relationships with people that I know my clients are going to need, what happens over time is that people start coming to me to say, hey, do you, need, do you know a good commercial insurance broker? Or mm -hmm. uh, I, I need this, I need this. And it just puts me in a very powerful position because today referrals are currency. Where I can help someone build their business, it creates a much deeper relationship. There's something else that I've done that sort of takes it to another level. But I think mm -hmm. the key is always uh, is mindset of uh, how can I help others. So, David, I have a feeling that you also have a specific, uh, specific follow-up sequence or something else to maintain the relationship. Because, again, a lot of people say they want to, you know, maintain these relationships and they kind of – Say kind of serial, and it's kind of like it is thought. But I think you, you, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you have a specific thing that you do to make sure that you maintain these relationships. Give us some more. Give us some more of that secret recipe. You're holding on to still. I feel it. <laughs> well, I, I, I love the fact that uh, you already know and have some insights there. So I can go to a, uh, I, I can go to a networking event, been to, let's say three to five awesome events in the last week or so. Mm -hmm. And I'm not one that just wants to hand out my business card to people. I want to be able to get into a conversation. To Wait, you don't spam your business card? Anybody. Hold on. You don't spam your business card? That's not a good idea when you go to events? Maybe I don't <laughs> want them calling me. <laughs> I love it. Go ahead. <laughs> right? Right? So I think but what I find is that when I have exchange cards, I can get back to my office and follow up with every one of those people before one person reaches out to me. So wow. I know, just to your point, that you, you need you need timely contact uh, that typically includes a LinkedIn connection. May send an email. Hey, really loved hearing this about you. And um, you know, from there you start to see where you can build real chemistry. There are other tools and techniques you can use to stay top of mind. Mm -hmm. But the 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 one that I use most regularly from a pure business development standpoint is to make sure that the people in my spheres have opportunities to come hear me speak at different places. And through doing so, I'm giving them a platform to meet more of the types of people that they're going to want to meet that are in my sphere. Um, so I, I think it's an important sort of piece in, in how we try to invest in people and how we try to make connections. You know, ultimately, if we can help them grow their business, it takes it to a different level. And, and for me, there's nothing better than a uh, client appreciation event where all of a sudden you can bring clients and partners and referral partners together to say thank you to each of them. Uh, and what they really want to do is be able to, to meet one another. Uh, but there's something else I've been able to do with that type of event, <clears throat> and that is recognize people that fall into all three of those categories you know, if you're a client, you're a partner, someone that invested in me and my success, a referral partner, someone that refers business that actually turns into to closed business, you want to say thank you to all of them equally. And this happens to be a great forum to do that. But from event to event, it tells people there could be more to our relationship without me having to say there could be more to our relationship. And from the first event at my 18-month mark, to my second event, which will be for my four-year anniversary, I recognize three people that fell into those categories at the first one. At this next one, I probably have eight or nine more qualified. Wow! So, and Amazing. I didn't. That was not. That was not intentional. But of course not. Of course it wasn't. Went. That's not. Yeah. Of course that wasn't intentional. You can't know that you're just going out there. You're leading with your heart. You're doing what's right. You're recognizing people for the great work they're doing. Everybody wants to be recognized and to feel connected and for their work. And they and they want that that feeling of feel good. Um, it's, it's even it, they they felt I'm sure amazing to be able to give you those referrals and to introduce their clients to you. Um, and so that you could help their clients. So you're creating these amazing win-win situations. Man, David, you. You are at your next level on this. I, ha I knew you had some things up your sleeve because no, not too many people 
um, pick that type of show topic. So I'm like, no, David knows what he's doing. So that's why I had to dig a little deeper on you, David, make sure that we got the real, the real story out of you other than we like to build good relationships, which you do, by the way, not glancing over that. But I know you're, you're, yeah. you're I know you have to be systematic because if you're not systematic, to everybody listening, if you're not systematic, this stuff doesn't work. I mean, you can't, you can't build a referral based business if you're not going to be systematic on really leading with that and being, having it be a core piece of your, um, of your um, of your um, thought process and strategy. If you're just going out there and saying, "Oh, I want to build deep relationships," and you just tell everybody that, and you don't do any of these other things, then you're then you better pick up the phone and start cold calling again because you're going to get probably get better results on that side. And just be and just be honest with yourself. Maybe you're not there yet. Maybe your heart's not in that quite in that spot yet. Like, but when you are, if you can manage to do what Dave is doing, that that's going to work. And then the consistency. So you're going on four years, and that and that growth. Heck, I'll have you back on 2020. One, you're gonna be like, man, Adam. This year, this for this next event, we got 20 people. I'm like, dang, David, where's my award? Podcaster award? Come on. <laughs> we may have to book it now. <laughs> That's awesome. Busy, right? That's awesome. Well, hey, David, um, I'll tell you what. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Before I let you go, I want you to uh, let all the listeners know how they can get in contact with you and with D Hill Financial if they want it, if they want to follow up. Well, the best way is to connect with me on LinkedIn, David Hillison, and uh, my website is dhillfinancial.com. It's a uh, continued work in progress. What you see is what you get. So thanks again, Adam, for all the work that (laughs) you do, and uh, happy to be a part of it. Awesome. Well, hey, David, thanks again for coming on the show. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Business, uh, don't forget to subscribe there, but also leave us some comments about, uh, in the, on the video and let us know, you know your thoughts on building a referral or referral-based business or how to generate more referrals or generate more leads. Love to hear your conversation there. Let's not let the conversation end here. Let's keep it going in our YouTube community. Love to, love to chat with you. With you there. And uh, David, thanks again for coming on the show.